Hey everybody, welcome to the video. Doug Berry here. I always appreciate you being with me. I want to talk to you a little bit about a recent homily that Cardinal Raymond Burke shared. It was July 13th, Asbury, New Jersey at the Shrine to Our Lady of Fatima. Now, July 13th is a key day. This is a key day because it is an anniversary of one of the apparitions that took place in Fatima back in 1917. This happens to be the day, July 13th, where the children, the three children, seven, nine, ten-year-old children, we're shown a vision of hell. And Cardinal Burke addresses that somewhat in the homily. We can obviously direct you out to that with a link to the full homily. We're going to play a clip in just a little bit of that. I do want to encourage you to go out to brcoalition.com, click the link in the description, and get a free download that we have that will help with regards to what he's talking about in this clip and in this homily. And that is preparation for our spiritual lives, in particular, martyrdom. Now, he does mention this in the homily. So go out to brcoalition.com, click that link, get that free download to the Magnificent Seven. It's a new download that we just recently started to share with everyone. And what this does is give you the seven key things that we should be doing. These really aren't optional. They're pieces in scripture that our Lord makes clear in one way or another that we need to be doing in order to find salvation. It has to do with things such as the Ten Commandments, the Beatitudes, works of mercy, and a few other very, very important items, virtues and such, gifts of the Holy Spirit. So please go out to that uh, to that link. Find that link there in the description. Go on out there and get that free download. You can print this off. You can have it all around you so that you can never forget the magnificent seven things that we need to do to live our faith. And yes, they do apply very much to what Cardinal Burke is talking about. And you go back to Fatima in 1917 when the Blessed Mother appeared to these three children and she made certain things very clear to them. Now, I know many of you who are watching are familiar with the story of Our Lady of Fatima. And if any of you are familiar with my work, you will normally, normally see this statue of Our Lady of Fatima over my left shoulder. Uh, or she's somewhere in many of the videos that I've done. And the reason is because this is an amazing event that took place in the world that changed my life and consequently the life, lives, I should say, of my family. Why? Because my wife, my children, and even my grandchildren now are being affected directly, indirectly by this amazing apparition. And how is that? Because when each one of us really grasps the truth of something such as the miracle of Our Lady of Fatima, the messages, and that whole amazing event, when we grasp it, the people around us are all affected by that, as it is with anything else. If we gravitate towards sinful behavior, and we live in that realm, that world of a sinful action, sinful behavior, maybe it's an obstinate sin we don't want to overcome, then people around us will be very affected by that also because it's, it's what's happening to us, what we're allowing to happen to us, what we're taking part in. It's going to have an effect on other people. So imagine the closer we get to Our Lady of Fatima, the closer we get to the truth, devotion to the Blessed Mother, the closer... We cling to these truths. How many people around us will just obviously be affected? It's going to be a ripple effect, a domino effect, whatever effect you want to call it, it's going to be an effect. It's one of the main reasons there's a rosary sitting on my desk all the time. There's always a rosary in my pocket every time I leave my house. There are at least two rosaries in my vehicle all the time. There's a rosary in the bag that I travel with when I travel around the country all the time. There are rosaries in my living room. Why? Because mainly because of Our Lady of Fatima. So when Cardinal Burke speaks of Our Lady of Fatima in this recent homily, July 13, in Asbury, New Jersey, he speaks powerfully about the importance of her in our lives and the importance of recognizing what our response should be to her messages. Just because it was 1917 and the year now is 2024 does not in any way negate the importance of us responding to those messages of Our Lady. Look at what's happening in our world right now. At the time I record this, and we just did a video oh, we about a week or so ago. If you go back and look at our, at our channels, you'll see we did a video, a couple videos, in fact, that addressed what's going on in the Olympics in Paris. When we saw this in unbelievable mockery, of the Last Supper, and many other horrible things that took place. We couldn't even put images, you know, very many images in that video because we didn't want to, we didn't want to show them. I mean, they're all over the internet, unfortunately. But what we see in these, these really tragic mockeries that are taking place against our faith, and that's 
that one example. There are many other examples of the chaos and the craziness of our world right now. So right now we're just going to cut to the clip and then we'll discuss it afterwards. We must daily turn to Christ and embrace the white martyrdom of indifference, ridicule, and persecution. Some of us may even be called to give the ultimate witness of red martyrdom, of death in remaining faithful to Christ and to his plan for our salvation and the salvation of the world. Cardinal Raymond Burke is an amazing voice in our church right now. I've been very fortunate to and very blessed to know him you know, for many years. I met him back when he was a bishop in Wisconsin. I was speaking at a men's conference, and that's where I first met him. So I, I've known him for many years, and I can say that his consistency in his voice, in his messaging, has always been on par. He's always shown us a very gracious and, uh, I'd say, eloquent way of conveying the truth. This homily, though, when you hear him say those words, as you just heard, some may even be called to red martyrdom. Now, some right away may jump on this and say he's warning us to get ready for martyrdom. You can take it the way you want, but I think when we look at what's happening in the world and we see the egregious attacks against Christianity, in particular Catholicism, when you hear of dozens of Catholic churches being set on fire in the last couple of years up in Canada, or you hear about this in places like France where they're on average, uh, I don't know, two or three attacks against Christianity on some level almost every day, give or take, in places like France. And we see this in other parts of the world too. We see, you know, whether it's Cuba or China or other locations where Christianity is constantly persecuted, it's easy for us to take it for granted. But when Cardinal Burke is speaking, as he is on July 13th, reminding us of the messages of the Blessed Mother from 1917 and saying to us that we need to have our focus. We need to have this focus. And so what I wanted to do in this video is simply say that we have these voices, especially from someone like a Cardinal Raymond Burke, at a time when we see things in different ways escalating in persecution and attacks across the world. And we see the warnings and the threats of an escalation of war to a potential World War III. And some say that we're already in the early stages of that in different ways on different levels. But with all of this unfolding, and again, since the mockery made against the Last Supper at the Olympics, these sorts of things should wake us up, especially now with the encouragement of someone like Cardinal Burke reminding us of Our Lady of Fatima and the importance of even being prepared for white martyrdom or even red martyrdom. It's, it's incumbent upon each of us, as I said earlier, to choose and then to act, to recognize the truth and then to engage in it. I encourage you again, go out to brcoalition.com, download that, that free download that we have on the Magnificent Seven. These are seven key things that we must be looking at every day of our lives, living, practicing, engaging in for the sake of the salvation of our souls and the souls of many others. And then the last thing that I will encourage you to remember is how we live affects people around us um, on so many levels and in ways we don't even fully understand. So make those good choices. And let's know that that domino effect does make a difference. God bless and strengthen you in the battles that you fight and the battles that are to come. I look forward to seeing you again soon.